Good morning. Today we're going to have you start your day with a CMA sea turtle biologist. So today we're going to be interviewing Chrissy. So first, what is your official title? My official title is a sea turtle and aquatic biologist. And I'm also the intern coordinator for the sea turtle and aquatic biology department. Okay, great. So how long have you been in this position? And do you have to have a bachelor's degree to be in your position? It is preferred to have a bachelor's degree. I have been here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium for about eight months, um, but I've been in the field for about five years. So it's a very small field. Um, and once you meet people, you're making introductions and you're making those good impressions from the start. Great. So where did you go to college? And when you were in college, were there any clubs that you were in that helped you to obtain this job and learn more about the field? Yeah, so I went to the University of Miami, which is down in Miami, Florida, um, and I was in several clubs that uh, connected me with different people in the field. Most notably, I was in the Marine Mammal Stranding Team, um, and so that really got me out rescuing animals, which is um, a huge part of our mission here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. So that really started my passion and got me into the field and got me to know the people that I needed to know. Okay, so what degree would you recommend would best prepare you for this job? Or what degree do you have or different people in your department? I have a degree in marine science and biology, um, so it was a double major. A lot of people who do training, which we do with our turtles, get a degree in psychology. Um, but anything that is science-based or... Um, getting those natural sciences. Psychology is really important because when you're working with animals, you need to understand how they learn. Um, zoology is extremely helpful for this field. A lot of people do biology as a major, so there's a lot of different options out there. Okay, great. So you did mention that you're also our volunteer and intern coordinator. So did you do any volunteer and interning before you got the job here? And can you tell us a little bit about our program or the importance of doing an internship? Yeah, I did three different um, internships before I got hired as a permanent person um, in the field. So I did a stranding internship, a training internship, and I also did a research internship. So there's a lot of different ways to get involved in the field. Um, our interns are very hands-on in the sea turtle department. So we take a lot of people to complete our day. So we have to feed our animals like Mr. Bailey here all throughout the day. Um, we have 12 resident sea turtles. So you're getting worked into feeding almost every single one of them. Um, and it does also involve a lot of cleaning and a lot of food prep, but these are skills that are vitally important to being in this field. Um, knowing how to do these things will really help you um, as you move forward. Okay, that was some great advice. So what would you say is your favorite part of your job? Obviously, you get to feed our sea turtles here, but what's your favorite part? Um, my favorite part is definitely feeding the turtles, building a relationship with them, um, and having them learn and progress through their behaviors is a lot of fun. Um, my other favorite part is also connecting with guests and also inspiring them. Um, I really enjoy mentoring people into the field and making them really excited about conservation because that is really the ultimate reason why we're all here. Okay, so what would you say a day in the life of you looks like? I know we're seeing a small glimpse of it here, but what else do you do behind the scenes? There's a lot that goes into every day. So I'll go through today as an example. Um, I got here about 6 a.m. and started making the diets for our animals. So we get here really early to make sure that um, our animals are all receiving restaurant quality food. Um, we also have to keep all of our records up to date. So in between feeds, we're taking records on what they're eating, how they're doing in their sessions. Um, and then there's also a lot of cleaning that goes on. So we have to make sure that everything is up to standards, um, nice and clean for our animals. Um, and on a normal day when we're open, we interact with guests a lot throughout the day. So we also take care of a lot of our fish species and our stingrays. So we're going to them throughout the day. Um, it's a lot of fun to just bounce between all the different things. Um, and it's really exciting. And every day is different. So that's also very exciting. So now that you've told us a little bit about <clears throat> what a day in the life of you looks like, what are some common misconceptions about the field or that you think people might have about your job? I think the biggest misconception is that we do um, hang out and just play with our animals all day. So we are doing a lot of different training. We want to make sure that our animals are showing those natural behaviors. Um, there's a lot more that goes into it than that. 
So um, while this is what we're showing right now, and it is a lot of fun and most people's favorite part of the job, it is um, just a small glimpse into what we do every single day. So do you have a favorite sea turtle here and why? I don't like to pick favorites, but if I had to, uh, my two favorites are probably Daphne and Snorkel. They are two newest residents that we have here, and they are really new to learning their environment and learning different things, so it's really fun to see them get better throughout the day. Okay, and what advice do you have for aspiring marine biologists? What could you tell someone that wanted to be sitting here like you are, feeding a sea turtle and taking care of the animals here? Um, I think the best advice would be to volunteer or intern as much as possible. Um, getting any animal experience is extremely useful for this field, even if you just go to the local humane society or anything like that. Um, they could really use the help, and that an animal experience is invaluable on your resume when you are applying to um, the next step, which might be an internship or a job. Okay, and lastly, can you just tell us a little bit about the sea turtle that you're feeding here today um, so that they know about their story? Yeah, so this is Bailey. He's one of my favorites as well. Like I said, I don't like to pick favorites. Um, and he was rescued back in 1989. Um, and he was found floating kind of like he is right now. So you can see that he does have this buoyancy disorder. Um, so what we believe happened was that he was caught in a big trawling net, which a commercial fishing boat had on the back of their boat to try and catch fish. And unfortunately, the fishermen didn't realize that Bailey was in that net. So when they brought the net up to look at what they had caught, they did drop it down on the deck. And we think that Bailey um, was dropped on his back of his shell, which is called their carapace, which did leave him partially paralyzed. Um, so you can see that he doesn't have very much motion of his rear flippers or any motion at all. Um, and then in, when it healed, it left some air trapped inside of his shell, which led to that buoyancy disorder. So Bailey does still have those very powerful front flippers. So you can see as he's swimming around, he's able to maneuver quite well. Um, and he can still dive down to the bottom, but if he were to rest at the bottom, it would leave him, um, he would float back up to the top, which leaves him vulnerable to things like boat strikes and predators. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing Bailey's story with us and hanging out with us this morning. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about a sea turtle biologist and the work here that we do at CMA. Thank you.